The probability that a woman of age 40 has breast cancer is about 1%. If she has breast cancer, the probability that she tests positive is 90%. If she does not have breast cancer, the probability that she tests positive is 9%. What is the probability that a woman who tests positive actually has breast cancer? Now rather than using probability formulas, we are going to consider, first of all, a frequency approach. So we will suppose that there are 10,000 women and uh, we will get the average numbers of women that have breast cancer or that test positive given that they have breast cancer, etc. So imagine randomly selecting a woman from 10,000 women. Let C be the event that the woman selected has cancer. Let T be the event that the test result is positive. So, on average, how many elements are in this set C? Well, about 1% of women aged 40 have breast cancer, so we want to get 1% of 10,000. Well, that's 10,000 divided by 100, which is 100. So we have 100 elements inside set C. Now, on average, how many of these women will test positive? In other words, how many elements are in this region here? Well, we see that 90% of the women who have breast cancer test positive. 90% of them. So 90% of 100 is 90. So there are 90 elements in here representing the 90 women who have cancer but test positive. You can see that the remainder must be 10. So 10 women have cancer but do not test positive. In other words, they test negative. So we could represent this second sentence as a probability statement. So um, the probability that she tests positive, given that she has cancer, is 90% or 0.9. Again, if we link this into examples we did in previous videos, this is the probability of T intersecting C divided by the probability of C or the number of elements in the intersection, which is 90, divided by the number of elements in C, which is 100. We are given that if she does not have breast cancer, the probability that she tests positive is 9%. Let C prime be the event that the woman does not have breast cancer. We can see that the events C and C prime are related. Either the woman has cancer, in which case event C has occurred, or the woman does not have cancer, in which case event C prime has occurred. So C prime is the region outside of set C. It's the complement of set C. It's everything outside of set C. That would be C prime. So this region here, which is outside of C, represents the women, the number of women that do not have cancer, but do test positive, okay? So these are elements inside T, but outside C. So how many elements are in here? Well, first of all, how many women on average out of 10,000 women do not have breast cancer? Well, if 100 of them on average have breast cancer, then 10,000 minus 100 or 9,900 do not have breast cancer. So there are 9,900 elements in the set C prime. And of those women that do not have breast cancer, 9% of them test positive. If you get 9% uh, 9 of 9,900, the answer is 891. So there are 891 elements in this region here. So on average, out of 10,000 women, 891 of them do not have cancer, but they do test positive. So they may end up thinking they have cancer when they don't. So there are four regions altogether in this Venn diagram, and the four uh, numbers must add up to 10,000. So now we can work out, on average, how many women out of 10,000 do not have cancer and do not test positive. Well, if you add up these three numbers and take the result from 10,000, you will get 9,009 women who do not have cancer and do not test positive. So in the first question, we want the probability that a woman has cancer given that she tests positive. Okay, that's how 
we translate this first question into a probability statement. Probability event C occurs given that event T has occurred. So we are selecting from this set here now. As we saw in previous videos, we, we um, get the number of elements in the intersection of C and T, which is 90, and divide by the total number of elements in T. Well, that's 90 plus 891. So we're getting the fraction of women um, out of those who test positive that have cancer. So that's 90 over ni um, 981 actually. That works out to about 0.1, which is about 10%. So I'll put an exclamation mark here because this is somewhat surprising. So a woman is told that she has tested positive she may end up thinking that she almost certainly has breast cancer. But it turns out that if she's tested positive, there's only a 10% chance that she has breast cancer. Not something like a 95% chance, only a 10% chance. So um, follow-up tests would normally be recommended, I'm sure. In the next question, we want to get the probability that a woman who tests negative actually has breast cancer. In other words, we want to calculate this probability here, the probability that she has breast cancer given that she tests negative. Now T prime is the event that the test is negative. So as we saw in previous videos, we can write this conditional probability in this form here. We are selecting from the people who test negative. So the, we want the number of elements in T prime. Well, we saw that there are 981 elements in T, that is 90 plus 891, and if we take 981 from 10,000, we will have the number of elements in T prime. That works out to 9,019. So, how many of these 9,019 women who test negative um, actually have cancer? Well, if we look to the Venn diagram, we can see that on average out of 10,000 people, 10 of them who test negative have cancer. Okay, so these 10 elements are outside of T, so they belong to T prime. T prime is everything outside of T, it's the complement of T. We, we could call it T complement. And these 10 women are inside set C, so they have cancer. They have cancer, but they test negative. Okay, so the intersection of the set C and the set T prime, that's everything outside T. Okay, if we think of it in terms of intersection of two sets, the intersection of T prime and C is this set here, which is 10 elements. Now, as a percentage, this number is about 0.1%. This number is known as the false negative rate. So the test gives a false result the event T prime has occurred, um, so the woman is told that the test is negative. In other words, she does not have breast cancer. Um, but of course, that's false. Um, well, 0.1% of the time that will be false. So that's about one in a thousand. So if we want the average number of women, um, you know, who are told that they don't have breast cancer when they actually do have breast cancer, we can multiply this number by 10,000. And of course, on average, we will get 9,019. Now, we will recalculate these probabilities, but this time using formulas for um, conditional probability and the law of total probability. So, Let's write down what we are given. We are, are given that the probability that a woman has breast cancer, that's 1%, or about 1%. So the probability of event C is 0 0.01. So straight away we can write down the probability that a woman does not have breast cancer. Well, that's 1 minus the probability that she does have breast cancer. That's 1 minus 0 0.01, which is 0 0.99. We are all also given the probability that she tests positive, given that she has breast cancer. That's 
0.9. So the probability that she tests positive, given that she has breast cancer, is 0 0.9. We are given the false positive rate. That is the probability that she tests positive, given that she does not have breast cancer. Probability that she tests positive, given that she does not have breast cancer, is 9%. 0 0.09. So for the first question, we want the probability that she has cancer given that she tests positive. So we have to use the four probabilities here to work out this probability. Well, we can use our formula that was derived in a previous video. The probability C given T is the probability of C and T divided by the probability of T. So T is the event that we are conditioning on. So that appears in the denominator. So how do we get probability C intersecting T? Well, we have to use uh, what we're given. We're given that probability T given C is 0.9. So let's look at this probability that we're given and rewrite it like this. Probability T given C is probability of T intersecting C divided by the probability of C. Okay, so that's using our formula. We're conditioning on C, so C appears in the denominator. We can rearrange this by cross-multiplying to find the probability of T intersecting C. Just multiply probability T given C by the probability of C. But the probability of T intersecting C is the same as the probability of C intersecting T. Okay, it's the same set. T intersecting C is, C is the same as C intersecting T. It's this region here. So we can... Uh, write what's on top here as probability t given c multiplied by the probability of c. Now we still have to divide by the probability of t, but we have what's on top. We have the probability of t given c, that's 0 0.9, and we have the probability of c, which is 0 0.01. We still have to get the probability of t. We are not given that. Now to find the probability of t, we have to use a result called the, the law of total probability. Now this is something that we looked at in a previous video. A person who tests positive for breast cancer either has cancer or does not have cancer. They're the only two options. We saw in the previous video that uh, to calculate the probability of T we have to uh, condition T on C and condition C on the other event, uh, C prime. So. You see now that we can just plug in the values. We're given all the information here. The probability of C give, T given C is 0.9. The probability of C is 0 0.01. The probability of T given C prime is 0 0.09. And the probability of C prime, well, that's 0.99. So I've subbed in here. Notice that the numerator appears as one of the terms in the denominator. Anyway, if you work this out, you get the same result as before. To uh, six decimal places, you get 0 0.091743, which is um, close to 0 0.1, or approximately 10%. Now, for the next probability, we use our formula. We get the probability of the intersection of the two events, C intersecting T prime, and divide by the probability of the event that's conditioned on, which is T prime. Now, what we have to use is this probability here, the probability of T prime given C. Now, you might think that this is not included, so how can we calculate this thing? Um, well, it turns out that if you add the probability of T given C onto the probability of T prime given C, you get 1. Why is that? Well, if a woman has breast cancer, then there are two options. Either she tests positive or she tests negative. There are no other options. So these two probabilities must sum to one. The probability that she tests positive given that she has cancer plus the probability that she tests negative given that she has cancer must equal one. So you see we're conditioning on the same event here. The event is that she has cancer. And since there are only two options, she tests positive or she tests negative. There's nothing in between. These two probabilities must sum to one. Uh, 
So you see we can write the probability of t prime given c as 1 minus the probability of t gi given c. Okay, so that's what I have here. And then if we cross multiply, so we multiply this by the probability of c, then we get the probability of t prime intersecting c. And this probability here is the same as what we have on top here. The set t prime intersecting c is the same as the set c intersecting t prime. So that's how we get the numerator. Okay, so let's just get the numerator. So we have 1 minus the probability of t given c. That's 1 minus 0.9, which is 0.1. Actually, if we go back to the Venn diagram, see there's a 90% chance that a woman has breast cancer. So there's a 10% chance that she doesn't have it. So that's where that 0.1 is coming from. Well, I should have said there's a 90% chance that um, a woman tests, a, w a woman that has breast cancer tests positive, which means there's a 10% chance that um, a woman with breast cancer tests negative. So you can see it from these numbers. It's, it's so much easier to do it this first way, of course, than to try and play around with these formulas, although the formulas can be quicker. So if you work this out, you get a uh, 0 0.001, so that's the numerator. Now, as for the probability of t prime, well, in the last part we worked out the probability of t, the probability that a woman tests positive for breast cancer. We saw that it's, it was 0 0.0981. And it's a fact that, you know, probability of t plus probability of t prime must equal 1. Because a woman can either test positive for breast cancer, or she can not test positive, in other words, test negative. There are no other options. So th these two probabilities must sum to one. Uh, so to find the probability of t prime, all we do is we take 0 0.0981 from one. And as before, to six decimal places, we get 0 0.001109.